to Arc Tutorials. This is Testing Concept Series and today we are on part 7. We are learning about non-functional testing in this episode. All these concepts that I am covering are equally important to both developers as well as QA team members. As a developer or QA, these are the common terms that you would hear as part of your Agile team or as part of your software development process. Hence, this particular series. Let's get started with today's topic which is non-functional testing. Alright, so today we are on episode number 7 but if you haven't checked out the previous episodes, I'll request you to please check them out so you have continuity in your learning and you don't miss out on any of the concepts. So today's topic is what is non-functional testing? Non-functional testing is a method of software testing that focuses on the non-functional aspects of the application or system. In simple terms, non-functional testing is concerned with verifying that the application or system is able to operate in its intended environment and meets all the non-functional requirements of the project. Some of the classic examples is load testing, performance testing, compatible testing, security testing. These are all peripherals to functional testing and hence they are under non-functional testing. Non-functional testing helps in identifying defects, errors or other scalable issues that affects the performance, security and other non-functional aspects of the application. So what are the different types of non-functional testing that are that can be performed on an application? Some of the test types of testing that can be performed are performance testing, load testing, stress testing, security testing, usability testing, penetration testing, uh, accessibility testing, these are all different non-functional testing. For performance testing is a type of testing where non-functional testing focuses on the performance aspect of the application. Load testing will make sure that our application can handle large amount of concurrent users or transactions. Stress testing is a type of testing which in which extreme high levels of workloads or usages or the amount of um, the API handling, though all of that comes under stress testing. Security testing is a type of testing which focuses on the security aspect of the application, uh, the multi-factor authentication, the token management and much, much more. Usability testing is a type of testing that focuses on the usability and the user experience of the application or system. So when talk about non-functional testing, these are all the things that you should talk about. Alright, so now let's some look at some of the advantages of non-functional testing. Non-functional testing helps us identify issues that may not be apparent from user's perspective. Like for example, load testing or security vulnerability or performance. Because as a QA, what usually happens is we will check for the system whether it is working correctly as expected or not. But many times we miss out on the fact what happens when uh, X number of concurrent users come to the system. Will the system still behave the same way? Now those are some of the uh, hygiene issues or I would say non-functional is uh, testing issues that are highlighted. Non-functional non testing can also provide insights into overall performance and behavior of the system. For example, when, when you are working with a lot of uh, microservices or a lot of services which are spread across, some, some will break down based on the heavy loads or workloads. Some may respond in a different way. There will be different time consumption, right? Amount of time it takes to send a request and receive data may, be, may behave differently under different uh, workloads. So that th those are some of the performance related thing. You will notice that certain code, certain piece of code um, is acting weird when there are a lot of um, users, concurrent users, or a system is not responding, throwing errors, etc. So that way you can overall catch the performance or the behavior of the system and get detailed insights into it. There are a lot of different tools and uh, applications that provide different logs and those stuff, uh, warnings, etc., which are used. It can be performed early in the development process. So stress testing or containerization or with DevOps and all that, the services can be spread out. Uh, if you see that the service uh, requests are going high, you might want to add another container to it, etc. These things can be performed well early in the development process. and 
for such things you will need to work with your devops or if your team has a kind of a support team you need to work with them to make sure that these are the requirements and this is how the system should scale up all right now uh, can non-functional testing be automated yes uh, certainly a lot of aspects of it can be automated um, say performance testing security testing stress testing uh, load testing all of this can be automated through different uh, tools uh, frameworks that are available right now as part of the devops and uh, security and infosec uh, frameworks it can improve quality of code certainly um, obviously that's obvious uh, thing that non-functional testing will help us identify defects and issues that may affect the performance security and any other non-functional aspects of the application overall which all improves a better user experience and better quality of our application now let's take a look at some of the disadvantages while it has a lot of advantages there are certain downsides to it as well uh, one for one sure is ways it's time consuming resource intensive uh, there is cost involved uh, because a lot of tools that help us monitor perform those performance scaling stress testing um, all of those are some of them are enterprise level and licensed copies which means cost is involved you need dedicated uh, team members who know that particular tools so it becomes resource intensive and obviously it takes time for any new person to onboard and get into that environment uh, it's not always effective because these are all simulations right uh, mostly what we do is we simulate a certain type of behavior and we anticipate that this is how the system would behave but in real time use cases certain times um, let's say you're building a shopping cart kind of an e-commerce for a um, large enterprise uh, during you know december thanksgiving or you know uh, towards the new year or diwali uh, the the number of users become too high and that's where we real test comes into picture of concurrent users performance and all of those requirements so it's not always effective but uh, close to guest guess uh, guesstimate right that's what they call it uh, close to guess, uh, gut es, uh, estimations right so yeah so it it not it's not really 100% effective but we can try to come close to uh, to avoid any such defects or uh, downtime of the application now it's not suitable for all types of testing like i said um, if you are building a static website a home page you don't really need to do a performance testing stress testing and all that uh, so you have to choose and see which uh, what degree of flexibility and uh, requirement your application has um, and that varies from application to application but definitely uh, a lot of aspects of non functional testing will not be applicable to uh, some of the um, applications that we build now it can lead to over reliance of test results uh, because a lot of times we look at the logs we look at the reports and we try to start depending on those tools and platforms for giving the data and it's not always accurate representation of actual application because a lot of warnings may come up fake there would be uh, some ddos at attacks or anything right so they're not really um, uh, a, a correct way of measure but over a period of time you will end up seeing that you will have 10 20 platforms that you are looking at uh, in terms of managing all the non-functional aspects of the application which is again too difficult to manage there is cost attached to all of this so that's that's uh, about how non-functional testing tools setups and frameworks are done all right i hope uh, the concept of non functional testing is clear uh, the different types of non functional testing is clear now you get a picture of what happens other than the functionality of the application peripherals of it thank you so much for joining in this episode in the next episode we'll talk about a very very important topic which is accessibility testing uh, this is something a must i would say for all the developers and qa uh, because mainly because uh, it has become a standard now you work with any client they want accessibility testing certified so we'll learn all about that in the next episode uh, please join me there if you like my work and tutorials please consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash art tutorials thank you so much for joining see you in the next episode